Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and today I'll be playing the final blitz only chess and during the game I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always making sure that there's something to be taken away as a learning that helps you improve your game to the next level. Now before we start off with the game I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So yeah, let's start off with the game and see how it goes. Got the white pieces here. I'll play the London system setup, which starts with d4. Bishop on f4. It's important to take out the dark square bishop before closing the diagonal of the bishop so that it's an active piece rather than inactive on its original square. And now we can play pawn to e3, solidifying our center. Trying to create a pyramid eventually. So... We can go with pawn to c3 right away or develop the knight. I prefer developing the knight. Gives me control of e5 eventually. Against an early c4, you can go with the knight as well. That's one idea. Or just play solid as always, pawn to c3, creating a pyramid. Okay, the opponent develops the knight. We can pin the knight, but then he gets the bishop out. Mm -hmm. Let's continue with our development or take this pawn. Let's develop. Focus on basics. Just finishing our development there of minor pieces, just one remaining. You can bring back the bishop whenever attacked with the idea that I can take back with the edge pawn and open up the edge file once the opponent takes. Since the opponent doesn't take, a couple of things we can do is jump in with the knight as well after he takes with the knight. There can be a folk as well, so we can try that. And there's no harm in that. People do fall for the trap. Because the knight can be annoying there. So that can happen. I think he has already blundered there with the knight. Because after I take the knight, he has to take back the, the pawn there and he loses the bishop. So yeah, that's how things can go wrong if you're not careful. And you can lose a piece. For nothing. And he gave a rook now. That's very nice and kind of the opponent. I'll take that from both the hands and he resigns. So that's how you can just win a game in a minute or so. Yeah, 11 moves all it, it takes. Just try to create pressure. Be tactically strong when you are starting off the game. Solid opening as I always say. Prefer the London system always. Starts with d4, um, d5, bishop on f4. Just developing your pieces to the ideal squares. Pawn to e3 there. Opponent plays e6. It's not that opponent did some mistake till here. He's playing perfectly fine. And the best move as well against the London to play c5 early. As I was saying in the game, I can go ahead on with the knight as well. Uh, so the idea with uh, going with the knight is after we go with the knight and the opponent is suppose doesn't play the, this move, rather try to uh, develop the bishop. We can hop in uh, with the knight on to uh, b5 there. Uh, and we are trying to attack, uh, create some pressure on uh, c7 there. That's the whole plan. Even after the knight develops here, uh, yes, you cannot now attack on the c7, but you are controlling the square very well. So that can be a very good uh, way of controlling the square plus uh, devi uh, deviating the knight as well from its original squares. So the knight actually generally lies on c6 and or maybe even d7, but here the knight will be very weak throughout the game. So that is one tactic which you can always try, but I prefer playing uh, solid here, played the move c3 there, uh, just trying to create the beautiful pyramid in the center, which is always helpful. Even if opponent takes, I can take back with any of the pieces. Both the pawns are there. I can take with the knight, and that can be one good idea of creating activity for the knight as well. Queen can also be developed, so anything can happen there. The opponent chooses to develop the knight on c6, which is also the right move. Nothing wrong to up till here. I play knight to d2, connecting both my knights. Uh, the next move generally comes with bishop on f3 and queen on c2, eyeing the diagonal towards uh, the king after the opponent castles. Here, the uh, opponent is preparing to castle by developing the bishop on d6. I can take, as I said, but I prefer bringing it back. The idea is if now the opponent takes, it's bad news because I take with the h pawn, open up the h file, and if now opponent castle, which will generally be the plan, 
we can proceed with our plan of first of all removing this pawn here and then whatever the operand does suppose to, tries to get up the bishop we can go with a uh, queen to c2 there and after any passive move uh, or even an active move say trying to get the knight uh, out there trying to make sure that knight is helpful that's even bad uh, cannot go there trying to just um, exchange the pawns there uh, we can even play bishop over here the idea is to just continue pressurizing the h7 and once he plays h6 you can just try and make sure that this knight gets away from here somehow during the game you can of course take pawns and exchange some stuff yeah but that that will not hurt much and now that you have opened up uh, your, the opponent's rook on the a file you will probably not cast in this game you of course don't want to cast on the king side as well which computer suggests that you can uh, i would recommend going to e2 rather uh, with the idea of connecting both the rooks that's what castling helps you in basically and keeping your king safe now king will be pretty safe on e2 as well you can align the rooks and sacrifice a piece over there maybe the knight, the knight as well to open up stuff and then checkmate the opponent well so things like that can work pretty much well in the london system so uh, just try and play this and I, I hope you like it as well and here uh, the opponent castles that all, that's also completely fine i went on with the knight uh asking him to take because if he takes i can just simply if he takes this uh with the bishop as well I'm, i'll take with the pawn taking with the pawn is the right idea always in the london and if he goes back with the knight there are two moves for me either i play f4 or knight to f3 uh, both are preferred. Uh, I'll playing knight to. I like playing knight to f uh, three there. Yes, that stops me from promoting uh, the moving the f pawn forward. Uh, but that gives me solidity in the center, so that if he is looking to exchange stuff uh, later on in the game. Uh, so that's how I try to play. Uh, let's go back in the game. Where what happened? I played knight there, and he just tried to make sure that he's pressurizing more on e five. Went on with the knight, and he lost a piece there by I took took down the knight. He has to save the queen here, and wherever he go, I can take the bishop for sure, if he takes or not. He takes the knight, I take on the bishop. And here also, uh, the opponent can try to save on uh, the rook, but he didn't check that as well, I think, and played pawn forward. Yes, computer suggesting to take the pawn, at least get some compensation in the center instead. After I take, then you can save your rook, uh, if I don't take the rook immediately. And if I still take the rook, uh, that can still be a bit helpful because you are just eliminating some pawns, creating some weaknesses in the open structure. Uh, if I want to save my bishop, I can here. Uh, but then the open takes on the knight as well. And as you see, the king is in the center being attacked. And after the open plays something like this, uh, things don't look uh, that bad, I would say, because at least he has some development and he can try and uh, get rid of the bishop somehow with by playing knight to e8 there and then tr try for some counter attack with the bishop and the rook the remaining pieces uh but yeah that fell off very quickly and he just lost with the rook and and there was probably nothing left because he had closed the center as well so it's a solid position for white and he resigns so i hope you like the video uh, do let me know uh, your feedback do like it on youtube as well and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because that helps me uh, promote my videos more. Uh, I, I like promoting my videos. Who doesn't? I like creating new stuff for the users. And if you want me to cover some specific openings or traps, do let me know and I'll just try to do that. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.